Alright. All right, guys. My short story is called The Great Invasion by yours truly. So let's begin. It was a cold evening on December 24th, 1943. Eisenhower sat alone in the Situation Room at Allied Headquarters. He had just been appointed the Supreme Commander of all the ground forces in Europe. He was flattered by the position, but he was also nervous. How would he land in France? How many men would it take? Would it even be possible? Eisenhower quickly, quickly realized he was going to need help. So he called up General and, and good friend of his, Bernard Montgomery to help. Next slide. Eisenhower says, Monty, we need a plan and I need your help. Monty replies, Ike, it's Christmas Eve. What the hell are, are you doing at headquarters? After a few minutes of talking though, Eisenhower does convince Montgomery to meet with him. At eight o'clock, Montgomery walks in. He's a tall grizzled man with a prominent five o'clock shadow and a British accent. He's wearing a military uniform and the confused expression on his face. Now, before I keep going, I have a question for the audience. Who wants to hear a really crappy British accent? <laughs> All right. After a moment of silence, Montgomery asks, Oik, what's the hit on, on all this? <laughs> Eisenhower smiles and asks Montgomery to sit down. He does, and Eisenhower begins to tell Montgomery his ideas. Next slide. Okay, Monty, here's the plan. We divide our forces and attack all along the French coast. The Germans will be unable to stop us. Montgomery is puzzled by Eisenhower's strategy, and he asks plainly, Oik, how do you expect this plan to work. We need to group all our forces into one army. Eisenhower scoffs at, at Montgomery's plan and replies with, Monty, how do you think that, that would be better? The landing zone will be too narrow and the Germans will just slaughter all our men. Montgomery angrily replies, at least my plan will see our troops break through the line. Next slide. The two men argue for 10 minutes more until Eisenhower says, hold on. Fine, Monty, I'll plan this invasion myself. And Montgomery responds with, the future of warfare is now, old man. The two men, both of their faces red with rage, leave the room. The, the holidays come and go, and Eisenhower and Montgomery avoid each other. That is, until January 2nd, 1944. Eisenhower calls up Montgomery again and pleads, Monty, I need your help. I can't do this alone. Monty replies coldly, fine, but for Europe, not for you. Next slide. All right. At noon that day, Montgomery walks back in, into the, the situation room and sits down in the leather chair a few feet away from Eisenhower. Montgomery asks, Like, do you have any other ideas to invade France? Eisenhower replies optimistically, we will be successful if we land our men along the Normandy coast. Montgomery replies with a sense of curiosity. Hmm, interesting proposal you got there, but I still think the front is too broad. Eisenhower listens intently to Montgomery's proposal, and he replies with, all right, Monty, we will narrow our troops down to four beaches along the coast. Montgomery smiles and responds with, boy, mate, that's more like it. The two men talk for a few minutes more. Before they leave, Eisenhower says plainly, Monty, we will make history. Monty replies with, I know. The two men leave the room and walk out together. Next slide. Over the next weeks, Montgomery and Eisenhower planned the invasion, ordered troops and equipment to be brought in, and they even add a paratrooper division to, di to distract the, the Germans before, before a landing. Before long, it was the morning of June 5th, 1944, just hours before the invasion was to begin. Eisenhower sat in the planning room of Allied headquarters. He and Montgomery had planned well, but the nerves were still getting to him. He was sweating nervously and pacing around the room trying to keep his nerve. Montgomery walks in and says, Oik, we need to go address our men. Eisenhower nods and both of them go into a car and drive to the coast where the troops are waiting to launch. Next slide. Montgomery and Eisenhower get to the coast early that afternoon. They are greeted by, by thousands of American, Canadian, and British soldiers. The two got out 
of the car and after briefly going over some final details with generals, Eisenhower and Montgomery gather the troops for a speech. Eisenhower starts with, gentlemen, the ordeal before you will test everything you've learned and may your spirit ensure our victory. Montgomery talks next and, re and replies with optimism. You've trained for months for this very moment. Your country's destiny lies on the shores, often in often the distance, but I know you, you will fight like lions and win a glorious victory for yourselves and for the world. May fate favor you all. The, the soldiers cheer and Eisenhower and Montgomery feel confident they will succeed. Next slide. The next morning, the invasion is launched. Montgomery and Eisenhower go back to Allied headquarters once the invasion is underway. Back at headquarters, Eisenhower turns on the radio and moves his chair near the telephone. He's sweating profusely from all the, the stress he's under. His master plan is being tested, and he does not know whether it will succeed or not. Eisenhower stays up all night waiting for news of the invasion. Finally, at 5 a.m. the next day, Eisenhower gets a call from Montgomery. Nervously, he picks up the phone. And, Mont and Montgomery re replies excitedly, Mike, we did it. The invasion, it worked. Eisenhower breathes a sigh of relief. All his hard work has paid off. Next slide. Eisenhower and Montgomery drive to the center of London to address a cheering crowd. The two men speak for a long time. Eisenhower is tired from staying up all night and lets Montgomery finish the speech. Before Montgomery finishes talking, he asks, my countrymen, was it worth it to never surrender? The crowd cheers and, and chants back, yes, and starts cheering. It was at this moment that Montgomery ends the speech, knowing he had helped change the world forever. Thank you.